In this lesson, we're going to figure out what slope is and how we actually find it, giving a variety of situations. There's four things we're going to look at. What is slope? How to find slope when we're given a graph of a line? How to find slope if you're given two points? And what are some special kinds of slope that we're actually going to see? First thing is, what is slope? Slope is the ratio of vertical change to horizontal change. Slope can also be thought of as rate of change, and this is typically how we see it in our everyday lives. Slope is vertical change over horizontal change, which is also can be called rise over run. And this is typically what most people actually remember, that slope is rise over run. The formula that goes with it is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if you notice, your y is on the graph for your vertical piece going up and down, so that's why it's on top. And x's are more horizontal, or the ones that go left and right. First thing we want to look at is defining the slope given a graph. So in this case, I have a graph. I have two points on my graph on the line. I want to find my slope of those points. So we're going to look at vertical change over horizontal change or rise over run. In this case, my vertical change that's going up is 4. And I'm going from this point, we always want to look at going from left to right on the graph. So this is my leftmost point. So from here, I'm going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, to there. And then from there, I'm going to go over 4, which is my horizontal change. Okay, so my rise is 4, my run is 4. So in this case, my slope actually happens to be 1. And if you notice, it was the same thing as saying I went rise is 1 and run is 1. And it still ends up being the same point on my graph. So as long as the slopes are equal, they work the same way. Another way to find slope is to give in two points. Now in this case, we're going to use the equation. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. A few things you want to make sure you're very um, clear on is... When you have two points, first thing you have to do is label those two points. A lot of mistakes happen with this equation when you're plugging things in in the wrong spot. So if you label them, you won't have that issue. In this case, my points are always x's and y's, so I have x's and y's, x's and y's. And since I have two points, I'm going to label one of them as 1 and one of them as 2. It doesn't actually matter which one you label as which, as long as the same point has the same numbers on it. So I couldn't say x1 here and y2 here, for example. They both have to be x1 and then y1. And the same thing over here, x2 and y2. Now that we've got them labeled, we're going to write down our equation. Again, it's a good habit to get into writing the equations down before you plug things in. This way you're clear on the formula, and you can see immediately on your paper where you're plugging in the numbers. So we're going to plug in those numbers. So we have negative 3 minus 2, and 4 minus a negative 3. If you notice when I plug these numbers in, I put parentheses around them all. It's not that big of a deal on the top one here because I don't have two signs next to it. But it's a big deal on the bottom here because I have a negative sign or a minus sign and a negative sign. And if I have them right next to each other, it could cause some issues and cause you to think you didn't have to actually put the second negative sign. So you do generally want to put the parentheses around it. So we have negative 3 minus 2, which ends up being negative 5. And then 4 and minus a negative 3, those two signs right there become a positive. So we have 4 plus 3, which is 7. So in this case, my slope is negative 5 over 7. Now that we've looked at finding slope looking at a graph and looking at finding two points, which are the two most common ways that you're going to find slope, let's look at some of the different types of slope that you're going to see. The first type of slope that you're going to see are negative slopes. And this is where the line is decreasing from left to right. Again, we're always looking at the graphs from left to right. So this point right there is my leftmost point. So from there, to get to this point, I've got to go down 10. So in this case, that's why it's a negative 10. And then from there, I'm going to run 7. That's why it's a positive 7. If you always do your vertical change first, the, the rise first, going up or down, that's going to dictate your sign either positive or negative. If you're going up, it's positive. If it's going down, it's negative. And in that case, you're always going to move to the right with your horizontal change, which is this run. So that means that number will always be positive. So it makes it really easy to remember what signs go on which functions. So in this case, that's the negative slope. So we'll quickly at the positive slope, but in this case, positive line is increasing from left to right. As you can see, this line is going up. We do the exact same thing. My leftmost point's there. So that's 5, so I'm going to go up 5. And from there, I go over 9. So my slope is 5 ninths. The other two types of slope that we have are kind of strange, and they don't really work very well with our slope formula. The first one is a horizontal line. A horizontal line has a zero slope. It's because there is no rise. We don't go up or down any because it's horizontal. So here is a perfect example of that case. I have my two points on the exact same thing, so I don't have to go up any. But... I do have to run, and I could have picked any point along this. I just picked those two points. So in this case, my rise is 0, 
and my run is 12, and 0 divided by anything is still 0. So that's why my slope is 0. The other one is a vertical line. Now, a vertical line, in this case, we're going up and down. So we actually have a rise, but we have no run. So and you can see here the two points, and I have a rise of 9. But now, my rise is 9 on top, and my run is 0. I can't divide by 0. So therefore, a, a vertical line has an undefined slope. The last thing we want to look at are two relationships more between slopes and different types of slopes. This is when we look at um, parallel and perpendicular lines that you might remember from your geometry class. Parallel lines have the exact same slope. And as you can see here, I have two lines that are parallel. They never cross each other. That's why it says parallel lines are two lines that never intersect. And if we look at their rise and run, they're both four over 3. So both my slopes are the exact same. So they never touch each other because the rate of change is the same. As long as two people are running and they're running at the exact same speed, they're never going to get further apart from each other because they're running at the exact same speed, the same rate of change. The other type of line we have are perpendicular lines. Now perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect at 90 degree, or 90 degree angle. And as you can see here, I have these two lines and we're just going to move this little protractor over to make sure that it is perfectly 90 degrees. And you can see it lines up and it's 90 degrees. And as you can see with the slope, my first slope is 4 over 3, the same as this one over here. But my second slope here, it goes down 3 and over 4. It actually goes in the other direction. And those two lines are perpendicular. They're the negative reciprocals. As you can see, it's the same numbers. I just flip them over and change the sign. So that's a basic overview of slope going through finding slope of graphs, finding slope of two points, and some of the different types of slope that you're going to see throughout your study of mathematics.